Okay, I think here we are again uh, at uh, JEP 2020 online edition. It's uh, 4 p.m. local time over here in Germany, so uh, 2 p.m. UTC. Um, we have another 10 hours of quality Joomla content ahead of us. Um, and uh, Brian just said during the break that after this session, he will fall asleep. Um, after the next 10 hours, I'll probably make my way directly into coma. Um, but uh, yeah, um, that's that's part of the job, so to say. So uh, in case you just uh, jumped into our stream here, uh, this is the online edition of uh, Jane Beyond 2020, the International Journal Conference. Um, which uh, is uh, happening in this very special online edition because our in-person event that was supposed to happen in Lisbon unfortunately had to be cancelled because, yeah, obviously the coronavirus issue. Um, just in case uh, you think that uh, an, an in-person event is uh, probably something that should happen again next year, um, we we'll, uh, would be very happy if you could uh, jump on jnbeyond.org and hit the donate button. Uh, because the cancellation fee of this year's event was quite high so we need any help that uh, you could probably offer um, to make an event happen next year um, if you're going to tweet about this event and brian's upcoming talk please use the jep20 hashtag um, yeah and with uh, these words i'm now uh, handing over to brian Tiemann, uh and his talking computer um, yeah the stage is yours brian i'm curious Thank you, David. Um, so, so first of all, quick uh, thing, the idea of this talk is not to send you to sleep. Um, <laughs> just been a long day. So this is actually less about Joomla and more about what you can do and maybe to give you some ideas and some inspiration to actually do something. Uh, that's the aim here. So what am I talking about? Right. So we are now in the fifth age of computer interaction. Now, computers are everywhere. So what's this fifth age that I'm talking about? Well, we started off communicating with a computer with a character interface, a command line interface. We then moved on to the graphical user interface. So that's the early versions of Windows, uh, OS2, Next. And then we moved on to the web. Some people are still stuck at the web generation. Uh, but actually, we've moved beyond the web generation for interacting with, a co with our computer. We've moved through to including touch. Now, for some people, touch is only on their mobile devices. Uh, but for others, like me, it's also on our, our laptops. And then finally, the fifth generation, voice, interacting with our computers through voice. Now, when I, I'm old, okay, admit it. When I first started working with computers, I was fascinated with the idea of talking to them and the computer doing something when I talked. Um, and I think this uh, was probably what inspired me. Perhaps a professor could use your computer, please. Computer? Computer? Ah. Hello, computer. Just use the keyboard. The keyboard. How oh, quaint. So that's from Star Trek The Discovered Country. Uh, I think, well, I think that's the title. This is actually from 1984. I know it's 1984 because that's the year that computer was released. In 1984, the idea of talking to your computer really was Star Trek science fiction. Definitely wasn't something we thought could happen. A few years later, IBM came around uh, and they brought out a piece of hardware, a card that went in your computer, which was basically another computer. And after about 120 hours of training exercises, it would be about 80% accurate. But obviously, we've moved on since then. 
in 2012, a uh, good friend of mine, Paul Delbar, gave a presentation in Belgium, in sorry, at Jumadé, Netherlands, uh, where he was joking about Joomla 5. Let's see what we can do. So we developed LaRich as a, a language interface, um, much like some others that you may know or have heard of. And uh, it's actually just a plugin. So once you activate the plugin, Larry is now listening. Uh, so you get an auditor interface. So from now on, you can actually talk to Joomla. Um, so that's that's really neat. So um, what we can do is say, "Hey, um, Larry, set up my uh, preferential extensions." Installing your favorite extensions. Oh, that's good. So it's actually trainable. To um, present now. I'm going to try doing your entire screen then this time. Okay. <laughs> okay, you can still see the Otter Notes, yeah? Uh, yes. And now it's showing the presentation. Ah, okay. Now it makes a lot more sense. <laughs> Oh, very, very quickly. Uh, let's just... Fifth age of computers, character, graphical user interface, web, touch, and voice, and Star Trek. I'm going to play this one again because it's worth it. Perhaps a professor could use your computer. Please. Computer? Computer? Hello, computer. Just use the keyboard. The keyboard. How quaint. <sighs> okay, so as I was saying, it was just a dream, the idea of talking to computers and computers doing something. Uh, Perhaps a Now, of course, we're used to it. And there's multiple different ways that we, can, we talk about when we talk about voice interaction and computers. There's text to speech. In other words, the computer will read out what is written on the screen. And then there's speech to text, the other way around. You talk to the computer and the computer writes text. And then finally, the third one is voice control. Clearly, that's me telling the computer to display the correct presentation on the screen during the chat. Makes life a lot easier. If you've, if you've seen the movie, the robot takes over and says, I'm sorry, Dave, I'm afraid I can't do that. You've probably all, or most people here, have got Siri or Alexa uh, or one of those devices, and every so often it doesn't recognize you. But it's amazing what it does recognize already. But where is that when it comes to the web? Yeah? Who has a website that you can talk to? Who has a website that talks to you? Not that many people, and yet most of us are using, are browsing the web with devices that have microphones and have speakers. Of course, I have to point out there are some limitations involved in text-to-speech and speech-to-text. The first one is, a, is the APIs. The speech recognition API uh, is only supported currently on Edge and Chrome. There are other ways to have speech input with um, 
on the other browsers, but they're not in the in the native API. When it comes to text to speech, it's much better. Pretty much everything apart from IE, all all do it fine. They all have text to speech output. Now, what does it mean about the API? It means that in general, it will do the text to speech locally on your computer without going off to the internet. Now that's not always true, but that's in general what it means. So because it's not always true, there is a freedom of privacy concern regarding this. We've all heard the stories of vid, uh, voice chats of Siri and Alexa being saved and individuals hearing them. Personally, I don't care. They're if there's a million people using it and they happen to hear my conversation, what's the chance of them connecting it with me? And to be honest with you, who cares? Yeah, I, I really don't. I, I swap that privacy uh, for the service. Some of you are going to disagree. That's fine. That's my opinion. So some of you are worried about Big Brother is watching you, or in this case, Big Brother is listening to you. Uh, Big Brother is listening. It's a fact. Big Brother is watching. It's a fact. Get over it. Yeah. You want something good service? It's going to provide it to you. Now, I'm now going to try and do what you should never do in a presentation, and that's a live demo. Uh, so hopefully this is going to open the correct window. It didn't. Right. David, David, can you just tell me if you can see a blank web page right now? With Oh, that says talking yeah. computer. Yeah, Brilliant. I can see it. Okay, I've managed to lose my second screen now, so I don't know what's next. But um, as well as the typo on the screen, this was a quick presentation I did originally for a local JavaScript group. And I'm just going to take you through some of the possibilities that we can achieve with text to speech, speech to text, and voice control. So let's have a look at web speech. So here, this is the, using the speech API. And I'm going to talk to the computer, and the computer's going to type. Um, because I'm speaking in English, it can recognize different accents. And of course, I could be speaking in all these other languages, but I'm not that clever. So I turn the microphone on. And now we should start to see that the text is, appear <coughs> is appearing on the screen. Now, for me, this is really good, because I don't know if you can see it on the video, I like to talk with my hands. Well, if I'm talking with my hands, I can't be typing. And I'm doing a lot of talks about Joomla, or I want to write a lot about Joomla. And as you can see, it can write the words Joomla absolutely perfectly. Which is funny because it fails on the word word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so. But that's just a, a good example of what you can do and how accurate that actually can be. Uh, just straight using the API. Very, very simple actually to do. Uh, but we can do other things. So we can control the color, uh, which is a command. So red, gold, gold. Orchid. So again, you can see it's recognizing that the word that I'm saying, we can see it down at the bottom window, and it's running the command to change the uh, background color. It's a very simple one, but it's just recognizing single words. We can also recognize phrases. So on this one, uh, it's going to listen to a phrase tell me if it's right or wrong, and give me any diagnostics about why it was right or why it was wrong. So I'll try this. Why did you talk while I was talking? As you can see, it's heard the correct phrase, and this is what it heard me saying, which matched. Why are you going? Recognize that it's different. It's not where, it's why. And it can, I can keep going. There's lots of different tests you can, I can show you. Um, but 
it's very sensitive and it can really pick up the differences. Now, we also have dictation. Uh, this is one of my favorites. Again, this is speech to speech to text. But with this one, I also have commands that I can do. So, for example, so now that I've turned it on, we can start to see text appearing on the screen. New line. And with all great demos, that's not working as well as it did. <laughs> Hashtag Joomla. New line. Smiley face. So we can do all this sort of stuff. And then with this particular one, we can, with a voice control, copy, save, publish, tweet, email, etc. I kind of like this, and I think this one's got potential of a good way, a way to move forward. Um, try to go back a page. Here we are. Um, then we go moving on to where we're not using the native APIs, but where we're using some JavaScript. So the first one of these is called Any Control. So this one is built on top of the API, and very simple to include on your website. Even I could do it. You just put this one line uh, in there to load the, the controlling code, and then you put the code inside your site. So for example, these are really quite basic ones. Next page. Previous page. Again, it's listening to what I'm saying. It's just popping up an alert because I don't want to mess up the demo too much and start going to other pages. But it starts to get really quite good. Uh, we can also do something a little bit more complex. And as you can see in the code, it's as simple as send a message to variable saying blah, 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 and send it at this time. So if I try that one, send a message to George saying the release of Joomla 4 is running late. Ooh. You can see it did it. It was my mistake not turning the microphone on and, on and off in between. But it starts to, I hope you can start to see some of the possibilities of what you could actually do with your website, what you can do with controlling it. Uh, you can also ask your website questions. What is nine times five? So here I've asked it, what is nine times five? And it's told me the answer is 45. Who is the president of America? President of America is unfortunately Donald Trump. Now, we can do all sorts of stuff. You can see the code here is really, really basic. It's not going to take much to add this sort of control and command structure to your websites or to your component, to your extension. And then we have this one. I kind of like this one. This one's called, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but it's any Yang or Annie Yang. Again, this is a JavaScript library that lets you control it. So, hello. Hello. Show me Joomla. Show me Berlin. Show me Berlin. Show me David. So not quite sure what that last one was. Oh, there we are, David. This is all it's done here is it's actually gone off to Flickr and done the search. So we can actually make very, very simply commands that will perform actions that will even go off using APIs 
and web services. You'll hear more about web services from George later um, and do some really cool stuff. You can also do probably one of my favorite things on websites, which is to have hidden secrets. I love having hidden secrets. They're all over my websites. Uh, this one is quite, quite cool. Uh, show TPS reports. Okay, that one didn't work. Try it again. Show TPS reports. There it is. Pop-up image comes up. Again, really, really simple uh, infrastructure code to do that. So if the script's running, what are we listening to? What do you want me to do? That's it. Really, really simple. And wouldn't take much for your website to have commands that you can easily control your website with by voice. If you think about it, it's really no different to setting up a short key that's going to perform something. Instead of setting up a short key for a keyboard, these are short keys for voice. Kind of cut quite like that idea. Now, I'm going to show you something, some slightly more complex alternatives. Health organization, the president said, while announcing measures aimed at punishing. Right. Can you see Donald Trump now? Yes, we can. Okay. So I recorded this about uh, 10 minutes ago. This is a, so this is the BBC website, and th I've used it as a demonstration of taking voice notes and how good and how qu what the quality can be like when you're using a bigger engine, a big, uh, an AI engine, as opposed to the one, the voice recognition engine that's built into your browser. So for this one, I'm using something called Otter. And Otter is designed, actually, it's designed for Zoom conversations. But you can also use it for interactive. Think Google Docs for voice. And so you can have it record, uh, listening to your meeting. It will take all the notes. And at the same time, people can go in and highlight points, add images, highlight to-dos, etc. So what I did as a test was I literally just read this out and let Otter listen to it. And this is what it comes back with. Just hide that. U.S. President Donald Trump has announced that he is terminating the country's relationship with the World Health Organization. Uh, absolutely perfect. The president said while announcing measures aimed at punishing Beijing. Well, now, the big difference here, you're not seeing it live, but that was just to save time in the presentation. It does do this live. Uh, it 100% live and it's just as accurate. It does a few tweaks afterwards, like seeing if it knows the voice and putting the uh, person's picture next to it. Now, with this, you can use this as a tool to generate accurate subtitles for your videos. So I produce the videos for AkibaBackup.com, and they're all subtitled. Those subtitles I am manually creating. I'm not they're not YouTube's generated ones because they suck. I am manually typing those in with time codes and then importing them. This is different. With this, I can export this text with the time codes automatically and just add those to the video. So whilst it was designed for one purpose, you can definitely repurpose it and use it for something else. Um the next one I want to show, uh, which is kind of the last one, is something called Resemble. Now, let me just open up their home page. Everybody, I think, has heard of um, deep fakes, the ability to import loads of photos of one person and have the software generate video with the other person's head. 
so far, up until now, they've all been done with an actor doing the new voice. This software will actually let you clone your voice. It's based on some research and you can actually download uh, the code to generate your voice pattern yourself. Uh, it's not that big a download, it's like 50 meg. Then you have to work out how to get Python installed and various other bits and pieces. And just when you finally get that done, you realize you need four gigabytes of data. Uh, so I abandoned that idea and just use this, which is a, a service that's been created. It's not free and it's not uh, cheap, but there is a demo. Um, so I went through the process of creating a speech, my own voice. The purpose of this is that once you have the voice, let me go new clip. Yeah, once you have the voice created, you can create speech with your voice just by typing it in. So this is a demo, so it's, it's not working live. Um, so I shall save it and sit, wait for it to come back. But the way it's designed is that you can do this as an API. So once you've got your voice speech pattern, it can then be passed any piece of text and the, the text will be announced in that voice. Now, I did it just before. It wasn't uh, a great sp speech pattern this time. I'll just play you uh, what it came up with. I suspect also, uh, because I'm on the free demo, it's also not doing it as good as it could be, but. Yorkshire is the biggest county in the UK. There's a reason why it's known as God's own county. Yorkshire puddings, Yorkshire tea, Wensleydale cheese, real beer, liquor, it's all fine. The origin in Yorkshire. Now that was really crackly. Sound quality wasn't that great. I think that was me, not them. Uh, because if I go to listen to it, the same thing in uh, one of their voices. So this time, this time I chose Harry, a British voice. Yorkshire is the biggest county in the UK. There is a reason why it's known as God's own county. Yorkshire puddings, Yorkshire tea, Wensleydale cheese, real beer licorice all find their origin in yorkshire so this comes with like 20 30 different voices which are completely natural as you just heard they're not like the voices that you get with your uh, operating system or your web browser which tend to be a little bit electronic they're getting better but they're also not unique to your service the idea of this is that you can actually use anybody's voice to generate the text that you're using. So we could have a Joomla voice, or we you could have your own voice on your own website. Um, just see if that last one has generated. Uh, uh, let's just see. Yeah, yeah, it has. It's probably going to be absolutely terrible, but let's try it anyway. Just by typing into the window. So not that great. I can tell that it's my voice. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. I'm not sure about the sound quality that's coming over. But I think you can see the potential of what you can do. We can actually now, with all these things that I've shown you, we can actually now really start to use voice on our websites for controlling it, for listening to it, for talking to it. Now, each of those use cases may depend on what the website is and what type of thing it is. But why limit the ability to search your website with voice 
only when you're using your phone. Why not have it all the time? Just an idea. I know one thing that I'm going to be doing uh, if, when I ever find some free time is I'm going to be building a series of shortcut command, voice commands that I can use in the admin of Joomla for myself. Uh, <clears throat> I just need to find the time uh, to do it. It's one of the many things on my to-do list. Maybe one of you will look at this and go, hey, that sounds cool. I can do that. And you're going to give it a go. Um, and the final bit to show, uh, you need to have a hot word detection. So that's a special word. That's the hello, uh, hello Google, hello Siri, Alexa, all that sort of, sort of stuff. And you can create um, hot words using this program called Snowboy. It's completely free. Uh, works right. It's free for uh, non-commercial use, and it works brilliantly. Uh, and the clever bit with this is when you record your your use of the word. It'll also look through its library to see has it. Do we have any other recordings of that voice and to build an even better pattern? So, a little bit different presentation, not really directly about Joomla, but about what we can do in the future, what we could do now if we have the if we have the will to do it, and I hope that some of you will actually be inspired to look at this stuff and try to think of ways that you can actually use voice on your sites. On that, it's a bit of a shorter presentation, David, but that covers everything that I really wanted to say on this one. OK, thank you. Um, I don't know if there's any questions in the chat or anything. Um, just a question what service we were using, but it was already been answered. That was the uh, Otter AI. So m not, not a question, but more like a personal remark from my side. I'm wondering, once we actually start using voice commands in our sites, how, how we how we can make users aware of this because in a this, users need to somehow learn that there's new possibilities we have to establish that pattern that's the part where i'm really wondering how this could work yeah so it's a really good really good point and i think uh, uh, some of these uh, clearly uh, showed you by using a, a, a microphone so if imagine this was your WYSIWYG editor your tiny mce and as well as all your normal toolbar, you have a microphone bar, you know, a microphone button. It's exactly the same uh, sort of process. Just about UI. Uh, just to point out, uh, if you inst if, to use any of these web speech things, you do need to give uh, the browser access to the microphone. So actually, that will notify the user anyway, because they'll come to this page and it will pop up and say, do you want to let the website use the microphone? Uh, so that's kind of a built-in notice, I suppose. It won't do it without your permission. Okay. Uh, and you can also only run it on HTTPS. It just will not run at all. Okay. So do, do, do you know any real-world examples? Um, so, I mean, the, the dictation thing, uh, I, I've thought it once in a while uh, when it comes to to uh, capturing a voice for, for text areas, uh, but the controlling pattern, is this something that you, you stumped upon in the wild? Um, I've seen it being in use at a corporate, uh, as a corporate client uh, who uh, name will have to <laughs> remain... Uh, Private. They're using it into on an internal system where it's uh, people in the warehouse. Um, it's kind of like a picking system. Other places would have used a mobile device, but for various, actually quite sensible reasons, they had to use laptops. And it's just not practical to use laptops and keyboards in that environment. So they're using voice control for that. Um, and all, I think they do... Uh, Voice control to say, yes, I've selected it. And voice control to type in any notes, like it said there were three on the shelf and there aren't any. Um, so it, it is being used in the real world. It's not really being used that much, if at all, on desktop websites. 
Yeah, okay, because that, that would have been my assumption to you. Um, for, for web apps, um, I see some great potential in that. Yeah, I mean, for web, app, for web app, the obvious one is search. Yeah, yeah, of course. You're, you're, yeah. you're used to uh, searching uh, on mobile devices. So it probably is more of a mobile device oriented thing. Um, but, you know, we're building. Uh, apps that work across all devices at once. So, uh, and this is the API, so it will work on all devices. You're not relying on an Android specific thing or a uh, iOS specific thing. This is the browser API. Okay, thank you. All right. Well, so um, no other questions popped up. Um, so I guess, uh... You're, you're you're free now. Uh, <laughs> I could go go and have a, a sleep for a few hours. Exactly, uh, I'm allowing that. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, thank you, Brian. Um, thank okay. you all for watching. Um, we are having another, yeah, roughly twenty minutes break. Um, uh, enough time for us to grab a fresh cup of coffee uh, and then we'll be uh, up with the next session by Marco Dings which is having the longest title of this online conference um, which is the short and handy Joomla development on Windows 10 using Docker with the REST proxy in Windows subsystem for Linux 2 WSL2 yeah looking forward to that <laughs> okay so see you around